In differential geometry, the Gaussian curvature, or Gauss curvature K, of a surface at a point is the product of the principal curvature K1 and K2 at the given point, kappa 1 and kappa 2. K equals kappa 1, kappa 2. In differential geometry, the principal curvature at a given point of a surface are the eigenvalues of the shape operator at the point. The... Wait. At each point of the surface, the tangent space is an inner product space. The shape operator can be defined as a linear operator on this space by this formula. Okay, left parentheses s sub x v comma w equals df of v comma w with left parentheses and right parentheses around it. <clears throat> v and W are tangent vectors, it says. Okay, F of V, um, have to guess, uh, is a is actually that's something I can't guess. Um, it's a function of a tangent vector. What in the world would you want with a function of a tangent vector? It doesn't have. It can't have. Can it have anything to do with the shape? Um, df of v, f of v. Um, why are you putting? Okay, v is a tangent vector. On the one hand, I'm think I'm thinking of it like a a shape. Um, I don't know how to draw that uh, an arbitrary two-dimensional shape. That's probably pretty bad. Um, a tangent vector on that shape might go from this point. Could go that way. 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 And but the point is that. A tangent vector to the space lies on a plane. So what purpose could a function related to that tangent vector have? Um, well, you know what? They probably define f of v somewhere else in the article, hopefully. Well, let's look for a different, different opinion, because um, Wikipedia is created by many authors, and none of them use the same notation, so let's see if this one works. The Gaussian curvature at a point or an embedded smooth surface given locally by the equation z equals f of x, y in Euclidean space is defined to be the product of the principal curvature of at the point. Okay, actually, um, this this description is actually starting to make sense now um, that z of f of x comma y x comma y are Euclidean coordinates um, and f would be maybe the height of the curve or something like that but anyway this this uh, description is pretty simple because if we've got an x and a y then at every and we've just got a surface that may uh, go up and down inside that x and y, then that's all right. It goes up and down. Um, so we've got this equation in Euclidean space. E3 is defined as the product of the principal curvature at the point. OK, this is just a bad sentence. Um, the principal curvature at the point, the mean curvature, is defined to be their average. Um, the product of Principal curve, print, okay, it's plural, principal curvatures. And the principal curvatures are the maximum and minimum curvatures of the plane, the maximum and minimum curvatures of the plane curves obtained by intersecting the surface with planes normal to the tangent plane at this point. So, something like this and this maybe imagining 
something like that. Do those have to be, do those uh, two planes need to be obtained by intersecting the surface with planes normal to the tangent plane at the point? The tangent plane is x comma y is the tangent plane. So that's the Euclidean space. OK, so if the point is 0, 0, 0, with tangent plane z equals 0, let's see, z equals 0, what? Oh, yeah, that is that is the tangent plane here. That's the xy, the xy plane. And after a rotation about the z axis, setting the coefficient xy to 0, setting the coefficient on xy to 0. Huh. So let's take a curve that looks like that, put our 0 point here, and then this thing, I don't know, what would be a good equation for that thing? Yeah, we'll just take the, the corner of a table. OK. And we put that to 0 right there. Um, it's it's a three-dimensional table, and we're just kind of going to find a curved spot at the edge. And it gets kind of as flat on that side, and it's curved on that side. And this is going to have the Taylor series expansion. Oh, and first, uh, we have to rotate the table around this point until the x, y, so, so that it can be expressed as a polynomial where the coefficient on x, y is 0. And that curve, they think, could be represented by 1 half k1 x squared plus 1 half k2 y squared. Um, so what? Are they? OK. Planes normal to the tangent plane. OK, OK, so this is, this is part of it. Um, they want me to rotate this way um, so that, and then rotate rotate this way as well. OK, so we're going to rotate the arrow that way and then rotate the, the table around that way. And then after that, there's symmetry, so we can represent the curve by uh, something that starts with a quadratic. And then you have to redefine your x and y variables from there. x and y, something along those lines. So I think they should have mentioned that it wasn't, it didn't just require a, it wouldn't necess necessarily just require a uh, rotation around the z-axis. It also re requires a rotation of the z-axis until you have um, made the made the curvature as symmetric as possible. Okay, but once you manage to get the k1 and the k2, um, the Gaussian curvature is given by k1 times k2, and the mean curvature is one half k1 plus k2 which would be just halfway between those two curvatures, I guess. So this description continues with k equals k1 times k2. Or, or wait, big K. Since k and k sub m are invariant under isometries in E3, in general, k equals rt minus s squared, r equals f sub x x, T is f sub y y minus s f sub x y squared and divided by 1 plus p squared f sub x um, plus q squared. Uh, Q is F sub Y, F sub Y squared, squared, 
Okay, well that's going to save a lot of time if it's accurate because that means that I don't actually have to figure out how to rotate this thing over here and then spin this around until they're perpendicular. Um, this is uh, something that can be used regardless of how f is placed because f sub x, y is not um, a zero here, obviously. However, um, this looks like an interesting equation. It goes f sub x, y, which um, I think means del squared f del x del y, but it's squared. So I kind of want to think that this might be del squared f del y del x. Uh, nothing else here gives me any concern because del squared f del x squared is definitely going to be is definitely going to be uh, the same whether you take del x first or del x first. But this one is a, a bit concerning because there are some functions I think where taking this taking the del x first gives you a different value than taking the y first. Okay, let's talk a little bit about isometries because in order to use um, that particular theorem um, that of what k is, um, by the way, there's also a definition of k sub m, which is halfway, which is one half k1 plus k2. Um, they introduce an e and a g and here and an f. Uh, I don't think that this is going to be something we'd worry about. If we can get k1 and k2, then there is not much point in... Oh, wait. This is equal to this times this. Okay. So that's going to give us the principal curvature, but it doesn't break it down into k1 and k2. So this is equal to k1 times k2, and uh, but it doesn't break it down into k1 and k2. k sub m, which is the mean curvature, is 1 half k1 plus k2. Um, unfortunately, they do not give a value for e here. They do not give a value for g here, and they don't give a value for f here. This continues, for every oriented embedded surface, the Gauss map is the map onto the, is the map into the unit sphere, sending each point to the outward pointed unit normal vector to the orient tangent plane at the point. So I can imagine with my table edge ex example that I had before, we could picture a sphere um, wrapped around that point of a certain radius that uh, just exactly fit into that curve there. It says for every oriented embedded surface, the Gauss map is the map map into the unit sphere, sending each point to the outward point at pointing unit normal vector to the oriented tangent plane at the point. What do you mean unit sphere? That's curious. Um, it seems like the different the size the size of that sphere would depend highly on the uh, curvature. Anyway. In coordinates, the map sends x comma y comma z to uh, normal x comma y comma z equals. Let's see how this goes. Translate that into square root of one plus p was f sub x del f del x squared plus Q was del F del Y, P, and then this is F sub X, comma, F sub Y, comma, negative 1. 
Okay, so I think I see what they mean by unit sphere now. They are using um, just imagining a circle around this center, this center point, and pointing the vector right there. Then he says, direct computation shows that the Gaussian curvature is the Ga Jacobian of the Gauss map. So that would be like del, del x comma y comma z of this thing, f sub x, f sub y, negative 1 over square root of 1 minus f sub x squared plus f sub y squared and have, I don't know, one of these go to the right and one of them go down. Of course, if that's true, then the Gaussian curvature is a 3 by 3 matrix. So that's interesting. Maybe they meant the Jacobian determinant in that, but close enough. We'll find, we'll, maybe we'll find that out later. All right, well, this seems like a pretty good start. I will bid farewell for now and get back to this later this morning.